Hi friends, my name is Borrodante. Let's test Paint Tool Say 2. This thing. So I've known this program for a while. I remember a long, long time ago I painted one pretty successful painting on the first version of Paint Tool Say. And I don't know, I had a great time using it actually. But I remember back then I wasn't really all that much into brushes in general, like I usually actually use just a round brush. And I expect this factor to be like the weakest part of Saeed, because I don't think there's a lot of ways you can create brushes, like custom brushes. Maybe I'm wrong, let's actually discover that part. So, let's start the predictable way. <laughs> yeah, okay. Oh, mm-hmm. I usually like creating document with bright gray, not white. Much nicer. Okay, let's move things around a bit. This is like trial, so there is some kind of limitations, I don't know which one. Like probably about the saving the document and stuff like that. It doesn't seem to have like a time limit, so there's that. Okay, how do I move things around? They seem to be like locked. Oh, well this is not all that many of options. <laughs> Ooh, use Tablet PC API instead of WinTab API. Mmm, the picture comes together. What WinTab is and all that. Yeah, let's not. Change the brush size relatively with the brush resizing shortcut. I hope it's alright. <laughs> oh no, there's no drag, like click and drag zoom. That's old school. Oh yeah, one thing that's weird about this program Hotkeys are actually selecting brushes from this set, like actual brushes. And if you create like your own brushes, they will be also selected by hotkeys. Okay, I can zoom with fingers. I can paint with one finger. I can't pan with two fingers, so I only zoom. There's a lot more limitations to it than I remember. Huh. Okay, here we have rotation and reset for rotation, zoom and reset for zoom, but what is reset? 16.6%, why is that a reset? Is this like fit to screen? Doesn't look like it. <laughs> okay, I feel like I'm obligated to remind everyone that this is a first view video, not the actual review, obviously. So, yeah, don't expect a decent opinion in this. <laughs> Oh, numbers change the density of the brush. And density, I think this is like opacity. Or even flow. It's kind of fast. Well, I mean, this is the blender brush and the resolution is really big right now. Let's make it even bigger. I mean, the size of the brush. Oh, it's... is this maximum? Oh, that we were far beyond maximum anyway. Okay, multiply by 50. Whoa, you can create insanely huge brushes here. Well, no wonder this this program seems to be really fast. I mean, I don't think I've ever seen a brush with actual blending to be this fast, even when it's like a standard circle brush, to be this fast on such huge sizes. I mean, this is pretty fast, even though it's lagging, of course, but I mean, this is the size of it. Right now we are far from seeing, the, yeah, there's the size of the brush. <laughs> and again, this is 100% view on my Ultra HD screen. The density of pixels is huge, so on a normal screen it will be even bigger, like, it's crazy. Okay, so this might be the fastest piece of software we've encountered so far. I don't want to rush with my conclusions, but it feels like it already. Of course, this is a standard circle, but pay attention to how dense the spacing is. It's crazy. I actually don't see any steps. I kind of start to suspect it's not actually... Well, it kind of has to create copies. I mean, like, maybe it's vector, but I don't think it is, right? There's no way that Blender brush would be vector. Blending. Super strong. Dilution. I get it. Or not. I don't know, why does it just become black? <laughs> what if there would be some red color in the picture? And we would be blending with zero dilution. The 
this is weird. This is insanely fast. I mean, no wonder it's using WinTab. But... Look at this. Again, I'm pretty sure you are not exactly aware of what I'm talking about, because right now, all the brush strokes are completely 60 FPS. With this gigantic resolution. Oh, okay, never mind. Yeah, the problem with being unable to zoom at any scale is kinda weird, to be honest. That's no fun when I can't just use the maximum out of the scale. Okay, I don't know. I don't know what dilution does, but let's keep it at 50%. <laughs> I'm just happy blending at 60 FPS with huge resolution. So we can make it sharp to very soft brush, just using these presets. I'm okay with that, pretty good way to work with this. Paint modes, just three. Vivid, deep, and multiply. Vivid. No difference. Deep. No difference. <laughs> multiply. Alright, maybe not with blenders. Let's try, like, pencil. This one only has multiply. Oh boy. It's multiplying itself. Okay, I don't know. As for just if you're happy with working with just circle brushes, this is amazing. Let's create a layer, let's try masks. So here's a test blue donut. Now, mask. Oh, of course, this is the <laughs> mask. I'm blind. So, yeah, we're masking with this blue color, so it doesn't switch to black and white palette when you're painting in a mask. Uh-huh, we can create selection by control clicking. Double clicking doesn't help. I wanna, like, in Photoshop there's a way, like, I think alt clicking on the mask turns the whole canvas into this image. Like, it will be white with black spotting, you can actually paint a black and white image of your mask. Actually seeing it. I mean, it's not super necessary or anything. It just would be kinda nice, you know. Can we clip mask, maybe? Probably not. Okay, never mind. Like, layers have a, their basic things going on. A bunch of blending modes, that's good. Masking layers as they are. We move layer just by holding control and click and drag the way Photoshop does. And surprisingly, not a lot of other software. So, just to work with layers as separate things to work with to paint, to actually paint. This is really good. Like, clip masking is one thing that I would appreciate because it's just so comfortable. Clip masking is when you have one layer and you kind of make this layer being locked inside of the transparency of this layer. So it's kind of inside of it. Control E merges layers. Awesome, all the hotkeys are so Photoshop friendly. <laughs> yeah, this is why I remember I had a pretty good time working with because it's really, it's not trying to prove something, it's actually making things work, not ignoring the fact that there is Photoshop, you know? Okay, I can see we can change the flow, but can we change, like, opacity? And can we control the opacity of the stroke with pen pressure? Form. Oh, there we go. Simple circle, blots and noise. Yeah, you see there are like very specific types of shape with specific naming for it. Which kind of gives us a hint that there is not a big choice. <laughs> I mean, they're nice and all, but I wouldn't use specifically these. Hair size. Oh, like a thickness of a hair. Oh, cool. So they're all scriptable, adjustable, not just alphas, they're like vector, vector shapes. Okay, if we can make like thick bristles and all, that's actually kind of cool, randomizing. This actually looks super cool. <laughs> I take back what I said, I think I'm really enjoying this brush right here. Just the fact that I really can customize it the way I want. Randomize, what exactly am I randomizing? All the parameters, I suppose. Oh, you can see, like, when this is not a circle, it's noticeably slower. And if we go with, like, 2000 size, I think it's gonna be really slow. But, I mean, the spacing of these brushes is just obscene. Where's the spacing at all? I, I don't think I saw it so far. Where's the texture? Canvas texture. 
Is it somewhere in there? Super small. Oh my god, it's so small. Yeah, let's scale it up. Yeah, there we go. Now we can see it. Is it horrible? Yeah, it's low res. Oh well. Well, I mean, this is like a basic texture. I guess it doesn't really matter all that much. So we can blend with texture into transparency. It's like nothing can stop us now. And it's still really fast. Like, it's still really fast for a blending brush. I can see like there is no difference between blending and not blending. Okay, cool. This is like a directional brush. Oh, there you go. This is tilting right now. Pan direction is tilting. It's so simplified. There's so little options, but they are literally what you need. <laughs> yeah, but so far, I don't know, blending of colors. Look at this. It looks pretty when it's even nothing. <laughs> so, so just paper is this kind of stuff. Yeah, basic noise. So if you want to like avoid perfect gradients of your transparencies, you can use a little bit of that texture. But again, no blending modes for the texture on the brush. Like there is none of them at all. It's kind of like linear height equivalent in Photoshop. So yeah, circle brush is insanely optimized. This is probably one program that has circle brush optimized just crazily well. When we can just paint with 5k size of the brush, that's optimized all right. Yeah, by the way, do you have like a square with just a strip of hue, not the circle? Because it makes the rectangle really small and I don't really need the circle. Okay, let's create a selection and try to rotate it. Oh, look, Gimp. See? Things can be done normally. Now I control, click and drag and I'm just gonna move it around. Amazing. Just what you need to quickly change something while you paint. Oh, mirroring. Instant mirroring. I don't know why it decides to actually move the canvas around and not just do that in one place. But, okay. And stabilizer. Let's use it heavy. Okay, that's not that heavy. How do you test a stabilizer when you paint from a shoulder anyway? This is blue poo. You're welcome. So we have some kind of special stabilizers. Next level. Let's make another level of poo. Oh yeah, this one, this one is like... Doesn't actually repeat the trajectory at all. Yeah, like this is super heavy, decorative line kind of stabilizer. Not just for your Parkinson's, but actually to create some cool decorative shapes. I'm kind of really... It feels unpleasant that everything is in the left. I like it the opposite way, like everything should be at the right side. Because when I have everything, all the interface in the left side, when I use it, my hand covers the screen. I don't see what I'm doing. <laughs> I only have like layers on the left side usually and that's it. <laughs> Blur, hue saturation, brightness contrast. If you add curves to that, that's literally all I use in Photoshop. <laughs> but curves, yeah, I mean, come on. You need curves. That's one thing you need. I feel like it's a bit lightweight. Like maybe Paint Tool Sai, the first version, has a bit more stuff going on. Like, I definitely remember there was a big amount of brushes. So this is, this preview version, maybe it has smaller amount of things in it. It's been a long time, so I don't remember all that much. Maybe in Sai 2, it's just smaller amount of everything because it's just universal in some point, in some way. So if you're happy with the set of brush shapes and brush textures that I've seen right now, I want to check one more thing though. I have the suspicion brush textures, right? BMP files. So we can just drop BMPs into this folder and it will take place in there. Is it so? Canvas paper. So textures for the canvas, definitely we can add more. It just doesn't have the actual interface inside of the program to add that. Thank God I decided to check this. <laughs> Bristle. Oh wow. It actually uses kind of tiny pictures to program the way bristly brush works. This BMP file is gonna be used to create a shape for that adjustable vector. I thought it was vector. It's not fully vector then. Well, it's still vector. Vector brush. 
even the bristly one is still you can kind of import things for a bristly brush this is kind of cool so to make this work I think we can just create another picture with the same blue circle we can use this image as a beginning thing there's no folder for just alphas for it, any other brush it's still far from being complete freedom with the shape of the brush of course so here we go now in new layer I'll just use black color and I'll be doing dots so I want it to be somehow a bit random like the uh, dirty brush the ones that I liked using something that's hard to predict what kind of shape you'll get from the stroke okay let's use this borrow bristle zero one okay so water oh here it is borrow bristle zero one awesome it's actually having this pattern now it's a lot less messy than I wanted it to be though <laughs> I don't understand why is there absolutely no spacing setting for the brush, it's weird. You can never see any steps, it's absolutely dense always. This is like the weirdest part of this program. So anyway, here's the circle, 3000 size. Why is it blurry when I start painting? Even though the brush is sharp, you see the beginning, the first pattern, is always blurry. Maybe it's some kind of under the hood thing. So this wasn't super fast. Let's find the brush size where it's like close to real time. 1000. Well, this is really fast. Not completely real time, but really close to that. Okay, so 1000. Let's do that in Photoshop. With a sharp round brush. Hardness. What spacing do we make it like 1% because that's what it does in Sai and 3000 size 1000 right 1000 Oh, yeah, this is really slow Oh <laughs> I mean huge difference maybe not exactly 1% step but I mean if we zoom in I'm pretty sure we won't see any steps at all maybe that's why it's blurring in the beginning because it would reveal some of those steps yeah look oh my glob conspiracy is real we can see these steps but it blurs the stroke to hide that oh my god Illuminati confirm it blurs itself inside to hide the steps you see it's kind of soft looking and that's exactly where the steps were going on and then there's like blurring that hides it what a bitch yeah you see like by the speed the rate at which stroke appears this is the step it's pretty big actually it just blurs itself out inside of the sharp edges that's why the beginning is blurry because there's no edges yet and it has to blur something Okay, so Photoshop is not exactly defeated yet. This is what I mean when I say optimized brushes. So the spacing can be like easily... Yeah, it was something like this in Sai, I think. So this thing... It's still faster here. <laughs> yeah, a bit faster. Maybe the step is even bigger. Maybe, maybe it's just a bit faster, I don't know. But the quality of the looks of the stroke is definitely better here. Like it looks completely finalized, you don't see any clones of the pattern. And that's why this brush is faster than every other one, because in other presets you can't blur all that much, like there's a lot of edges there. Wow, this has been a weird episode, just investigating why brushes are so fast. <laughs> But yeah, I guess this is it. Tell me if you know something else about this program that I don't know yet. Especially about the brushes and about the ability to change the layout of the interface. Because that's really like bothering me right now. But anyway, I hope this first not really view was helpful somehow. But for now, this is it. And I thank you for watching. If you did, I guess you did. If you're here, leave a like and subscribe. Tell a friend. Blur it. Do whatever you want. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.